All right, y'all, so we're back with another one, man. This time, we're going to be checking out a complete guide on the gold lane. Now, your boy is actually going to get back to posting gameplay over on my gameplay channel. So, I want to see. I want. I got to get sharp on all the roles because, you know, you got to feel when you play solo. I don't know what roles I'm going to be playing. I'm mainly a jungler, but, I mean, hey, we going to see what it is. I'm, I'm dope on Marksman, too, so we going to see how that goes. But, yeah, let's freshen up on some things. See, see what's talked about in this video. See, maybe if I can learn some tricks that I don't know. Um, recommend me some more videos to check out in the comment section down below and let's jump into it y'all video you'll be learning everything you need to know on how to become an effective goal laner including how to play at each phase of the game and important tips that you should apply so for the beginners who don't know yet what the fish is goal lane well in mobile legends the map is divided in three lanes the top and bottom lanes are randomly assigned as the goal or exp lane when the game starts you can see where the goal lane is when the game starts by looking at the mini map See the gold dollar icon here? That's where the goal lane is for that specific game. If you're epic rank or higher, you can also check this during the drafting phase by clicking the little map icon here. Over here, you can see where the goal lane is. What gives the goal lane its name is a special cannon minion that provides 25% extra gold compared to the other cannon minions in the other lanes during the first 5 minutes of the game. This obviously means that the goal laner will be able to gain gold faster than the other rows. As the goal laner, your main responsibility is to be the primary damage dealer for your team, especially during the later stages of the game. In order to do that, your priority for the early and mid phases of the game will be to farm as much as possible so you can get as much levels and gold as humanly possible. Levels will increase your damage through base attributes and upgrading skills, while obtaining gold will give you access to items which massively boost your damage output. So the question is then, which heroes can do the job? Well, we want heroes that have high damage scaling so that all the resources that are funneled to the goal laner will mean something. In Mobile Legends, this will be most of the marksman heroes and can sometimes be mages such as Lunox and Harith. This is because marksman heroes have ranged attacks and can continuously deal high sustained damage throughout fights. Here are the current meta goal laners as of the time of recording and also the heroes which I believe are more suitable for beginners to play. For beginners, Try to play and master around 1 or 2 heroes first. This will reduce your stress in trying to learn new mechanics, so you can focus on improving other aspects of your game. If you are unsure of how- Really, if you can master Clint and Brody, you can probably play in any elo with just those two picks. Let me see who else he had up there. Uh, Meta, I mean, there's Carrie as well. Carrie's a strong goal laner for sure. Um, there's there's some missing, but Nate, Nate, Nathan, like, he's strong right now. Oh yeah, but then he's trying to make it easy for beginners. I mean, you know, it's some, it's some. I guess carry is kind of difficult. Nathan can be difficult because he has no escapes. To learn new mechanics, so you can focus on improving other aspects of your game. If you're unsure of how to play a specific hero, do join my Discord server. Our Discord community is really helpful and can definitely give you tips on how to play them. You can find the link to the Discord server in the description of this video. Now that we know what is the goal lane and what a goal laner's main responsibilities are, let's talk about how to actually play one. Between the start of a game until about the 5 minutes mark, is usually known as the early game or the laning phase. As mentioned earlier, the goal lane will be supplied with the goal cannon minion in the first 5 minutes. As such, it is extremely important for you to be in the lane to farm the gold from the minion waves during this period. Positioning in the lane as a solo queue goal laner is crucial. Try to position yourself on either side of the lane, and not in the middle. The reason is because the middle is where you will be most vulnerable. The safe side of the lane is where you will be the safest, as it will be difficult to be ganked from this area. If the enemy approaches your lane, you will usually have sufficient time to retreat. Staying on the safe side will sometimes force the enemy laner to the opposite side which is more prone to ganking. The opposite side is more risky than the safe side, but will still usually be better than being in the middle. Being on the opposite side will give you vision to the routes leading into the lane, giving you information of any enemy approach. But it is prone to surprise engages if the enemy has ranged engage tools, such as Franco's hook or Kufra's jump, so be prepared if you choose to stay in this position. As much as possible, try to make use of the bushes and remain in them, especially if you're not actively attacking. This denies enemy vision on you, which makes it more difficult to gank you. As much as positioning is key, map awareness is equally if not more important. As a solo queue goal laner, 90% of staying alive is actually dependent on how aware you are of the map. 
Missing enemies means potential ganks on you, and given how squishy you are, a simple two-man gank can easily lead to your death. So make sure you always keep one eye on the map. The key enemies you want to watch out for are the enemy roamer, mid laner, and jungler. It is very common for either of these enemies to rotate to the goal lane to secure a kill on you in the early game. Roamers sometimes like to start straight at the goal lane at the beginning of the game. So when you're puffing towards the goal lane during the start of the game, you should already keep an eye on the map to see if the enemy roamer can be spotted anywhere on the map. If you do not see him at all, you should play safer with your positioning. Junglers like to puff towards the goal lane for an early gank around the 1 to 2 minutes mark. So make sure you play safer during this period, especially if you have no teammates near you. Your roamer may sometimes provide vision on the jungler at the start of the game. So if you see them starting at the EXP side buff, you can expect that the enemy jungler will rotate to the goal lane around that timing. On the other hand, if you see your team's jungler or other teammates puffing towards you, you can try to bait the opposing laner or just be prepared to gank him. Make sure you keep an eye on the mid lane minion wave situation as well, as mid laners may rotate to gank you when they have cleared their wave. And of course, we should not forget that there's opposing goal laner that you will have to face. Sometimes you will face him 1v1 and other times the enemy roamer will babysit them and you'll be 1v2. In a 1v2 situation, it's best to just play safe and grab whatever farm you can safely. It's not wrong to keep hugging your tower in this situation if that's what you need to remain safe. In solo queue, you should not expect your roamer to babysit you and stick with you 24-7 during the laning phase. As the rose name states, it's a roamer and he's supposed to be roaming around the map. Whenever your roamer isn't helping you, it probably means that he's creating a numbers advantage at other areas of the map. So as long as you don't die, you're already helping yourself and the team. In a 1v1, you have to assess the situation and determine if you're the stronger early game hero. Heroes such as Leslie or Mia tend to be weaker in the early game. Uh, one thing that I noticed, um, a lot of flaws that people sometimes have is over committing and over staying under a tower. So like in this situation right here, if the enemies were to gank and they stay under tower, like depending on how many enemies it is, they can easily dive that tower. So what I'll see happen is my team stay under the tower, die, and then blame the team for not coming, which maybe the team should have been there. But as a goal laner, you could have just backed up off that tower and just let them take it because you know you can't you know what you can't defend against. If you got three enemies jumping on you and your team is nowhere near, they're gonna kill you and take the tower. They might you might as well just let them take the tower. That way they don't get that free kill on you and the tower. Because all you're doing is giving them extra farm and gold at that point. So you have to be willing to make certain sacrifices when you see that there's nothing that you can do. And all you're going to do is make it worse by feeding them your life as well. So it's, sometimes it's tough decisions playing these roles, but you got to make them. And will get out damaged by other heroes, so try to play safer with such marksmen. Trying to trade HP with the opposing laner tends to go badly for such heroes in the early game. And if you're low on HP, you will not be able to stay in the lane to farm. On the flip side, you can adopt a controlled aggression approach if you are the stronger early game hero. You can use your early game advantage and poke the opposing laner to reduce their HP as low as possible. This will force them away from your minions which can possibly deny farm from them or even force them to waste time recalling back to base. If they decide to stay even when they are low HP, you can simply take advantage of this and finish them off. However, remember to never be overly aggressive and be map aware at all times. Winning the lane doesn't mean you have to land a kill on the opposing laner. You can win the lane just by forcing the enemy to recall. Killing him is simply a bonus. Don't worry if you are a beginner and are not familiar with which heroes are stronger than which in the early game. It will take you time to familiarize with the heroes. So for now, just play safely and ensure you get your farm. There is an advanced technique known as lane freezing, which you can use to create better conditions for you to farm or set up gangs. The idea is to refrain from hitting enemy minions so that your minions will be killed first. This will cause the enemy minions to move further into your lane and clash nearer to your tower. When you create such a condition, the enemy goal laner will have to be deeper in the lane and be more prone to ganks if he wants to get the farm from your minions. At the same time, you'll also be closer to your tower, which makes it a lot more difficult to gank you. And even if the enemy tries, you're only a millisecond away from the protection of your tower. If your minions were cleared by the enemy early, you can simply clear until the last enemy minion is left. And and then draw it to the edge of your tower range and freeze it there until your next wave of minions clash with it. If you're very low on HP, please don't be greedy and continue staying in the lane, especially when enemies are missing. Dying is a lot worse than missing a couple of minions, especially if you died without clearing the wave. It feeds the enemy 200 gold and they can have a free license to push your turret if your team doesn't defend it. Depending on how farmed you are after 5 minutes, you can start to rotate a little with your team and help them to deal damage during fights. But if you're not doing that well or you're using a hero that needs 3 or 4 items, it will be better to stay in lane and continue farming up until you have more items and levels. 
for the mid game in general, continue keeping your eye on the map and go to the lanes where there are minion waves approaching and farm up as much as possible. Do not take high risks such as going too far away from your tower and going too deep into a lane. Even if you are very farmed, a 2 man gank can still easily kill you off. I see plenty of goal laners do this when they are fed, and they end up feeding the enemy because of their overconfidence. You should never ever face check unknown bushes as a goal laner, especially when enemies are missing. Remember, you are still very squishy, <laughs> so even a one enemy ambush can finish you off in an instant. What do I mean by face checking and unknown bushes? Well, face checking is basically being the first to walk into a bush, while an unknown bush is one that you had no recent vision of. You should always allow a more tanky hero, which will usually be your team's XP laner or roamer, to check the bushes ahead of you first. You can then follow behind them, especially during the mid game onwards. During team fights, unless you know what you're doing, try to position yourself near to your other teammates, so they will be able to assist you if you're jumped on by the enemy team. This is crucial, as the goal laner is usually the highest priority target during any team fight, and you can be sure that the enemy team will jump on you at any opportunity. From around the 8th minute mark, teams will generally start grouping up in 3s or more, which is when most large team fights will happen, because that is when the lot starts to become available. At this point, you should never be by yourself most of the time, unless you have vision of the enemies and you know you're safe. The same advice applies from the mid game. Never face check unknown bushes and always follow behind your team's tanks. You should still try to farm up as much as possible until you're about 3 to 4 damage items at least. Most of the late game for a goal laner will be about sticking near to your team and staying safe until a team fight breaks out. You are crucial part of your team because you are the highest damage dealer, so try to stick to them as much as possible and participate in those fights. Never ever try to solo push a lane unless you have clear vision of the enemies and you know they won't be able to reach you in time. Unless you know what you're doing, you should never be doing this. When a team fight does eventually break out, be hyper aware of your surroundings and try to hit priority targets, such as the enemy jungler, mid laner or goal laner, as long as it doesn't put you in a high risk position. Otherwise, it is totally fine hitting whatever is in front of you, or anything that your team manages to catch on. Be very aware of what skills and ultimates your teams and the enemies have used. If the enemy team has used most of their skills, it is usually the green light for you to be more aggressive, especially if your team is still healthy. You can check what ultimates are available on your team at the top of your screen. A green light on the hero indicates that they have their ultimate available. As usual, try to never isolate yourself from your team, as that will be the flashing green light for the enemy team to jump on and eliminate you. Stay behind your tanks and adopt a controlled aggression approach. You should only go beyond them when chasing enemies who have ran out of skills and you are confident to run them down. During tower pushes, you will be the main source of tower damage for your team, so prioritize hitting the towers, especially if the tower is already low health. Destroying an inhibitor turret is extremely important, as it will spawn super minions on that lane which creates natural pressure for that lane. For emblems, items and battle spells, I would recommend joining my discord server and checking with the community for build recommendations as builds can change wildly for each patch. A general advice is to sacrifice some damage and build defensive items when necessary. You do zero damage if you're already dead, even with a full damage build. So build items like Wind of Nature, Rose Gold Meteor, Athena's Shield or Immortality when necessary. In general, try to take safer routes when solo pathing to other lanes to avoid ambushes. Pathing through the river area alone is generally a big no-no when you have no vision of the area. The green line is the safest path to take, while the yellow line has medium risk. And of course, the red line has the biggest risk. It is generally best to follow the green path when you have no vision, while the yellow path is okay if you have some vision of the enemies and need to rotate quickly. The red path should only be taken if you have full vision of the enemies. If you are alone in a lane defending a tower, and there are more than two enemies trying to push it, it's best that you just give up the tower and not risk it. If they manage to gank you and you die, the tower will be going down anyways. I know you will feel the urge to defend your tower, but it really isn't worth it. Do not take the jungle buffs in the early game, and leave the jungle creeps for your jungler especially during the first 5 minutes of the game. This is extremely important, as the jungler will need to farm from these monsters during this period of the game, especially the buffs. Taking the jungle during the early game not only slows down your jungler, but will also slow yourself down, as it takes a long time for you to kill these monsters as well. So, stick to farming your lane during the early game. However, you can start taking the orange buff once you're fed enough in the late game, which is when you have 4 or 5 items. And for my final tip, do your best to last hit every minion that you can throughout all phases of the game. Last hitting gives you a lot more gold than not last hitting, which accelerates your farm even more if you can do it consistently. Practice makes perfect, so don't worry if you don't become a master goal laner overnight. I know that the Mobile Legends community can be quite toxic at times, especially in solo queue, but don't worry about the flamers and just keep applying what you have learned from this guide and you'll soon master the goal lane. Do leave a like and comment if you found the guide useful and you would like more guides on other roads. And as always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.
Yeah, this was a good video. This was really good. This was a good intro to go laning for sure. I think this can definitely help people who are just getting started and learning how to play the role. Yeah, I loved it, man. Um, be sure to drop that thumbs up, subscribe, and turn notification, y'all. And I'll catch y'all on the next one, fam. Peace out, y'all.